Hello, my name is Philippe Girard, a professor in the history department at McNeese State University. And I'm Candy Thornton. I'm also from the history department at McNeese. Welcome to your Grandma Rocks, where we explore the lives of famous women in history. Welcome and bienvenue à nos amis francophones. Vous écoutez la radio de l'Université McNeese. On the program today, music and history as we retrace the life of three remarkable women. They were minorities in their field but earned fearsome reputations. So what did they do? Literature? No. Science? No. I don't know. Politics? Entertainment? No. I don't know. You got me. Did they just stay home, wash dishes, and crank out babies? Definitely not. They were pirates. Ah, okay. So now we're covering criminals in the show. Not exactly. There was more to pirates than just looting and pillaging. You see, they were really freedom fighters. Wow, sounds like a fun show. Did these pirates have names? Well, the sources aren't good, but we do know the names of three of them. They were Anne Bonny, Rachel Wall, and Mary Reed. Before we get started, let's set the mood with a song by popular artist Emmy Lovato, who wrote the song to be proud of who you are. The song is called Confident. Bonjour and welcome back to Your Grammar Rocks. We just listened to Confident by Demi Lovato. Je m'appelle Philippe Girard. And I'm Candy Thornton. Today we're exploring the life of Anne Bonny, Mary Reed, and Rachel Wall, three famous lady pirates. I teach Caribbean history, but I must confess that I had never heard of Rachel Wall. That's not surprising. There is little information about female pirates. Much of what we know comes from a general history of the pirates published by Captain Charles Johnson in 1724 and 1728. So Anne Bonny and Mary Reed, I do know. They're more famous, indeed. These two came from different areas, but they ended up on the same ship during the Golden Age of Piracy, a period that roughly spans 1650 to 1720. Two women on the same ship? Wasn't it rare for women to be pirates? I mean, most sailors considered it bad luck to have women on board their ship. They did. That explains why Anne Bonny and Mary Reed dressed in men's clothing. You know what? It was surprisingly common for powerful women in history to cross-dress. Atshepsut, the female pharaoh of Egypt, she also dressed as a man. Do you think it had something to do with overcoming sex discrimination? That by denying their feminine side altogether, people would view you as a man? Maybe. We also had a show about the French writer Georges Sand, and another one about the queen of Angola, Anna Njinga, and both of them dressed as men, too. Well, in the case of Anne Bonny and Mary Reed, it's a bit more complicated. They dressed as men to disguise themselves while pirates, but they also both dressed as boys as children. The plot sickens. 
So what was their background? I mean, how do you even become a pirate in the first place? It's not like you can go to McNeese and get a degree in pirate studies with a concentration in booty. Sadly, they didn't go to McNeese, no. Anne Bonny was the daughter of a wealthy Irish lawyer and his servant, so in order to hide his affair, he disguised her as a boy. An affair. Interesting. However, he eventually got caught and he moved to Charleston, South Carolina. I've come to Charleston to do research. Uh, in the 1700s, this was a very Caribbean city with extensive commercial contacts with all the islands due south. No surprise she ended up as a pirate. Well, Anne Bonny was quite the girl. She had an uncontrollable temper, and against her father's wishes, she married a poor sailor. And this at a time when marriage was something your parents arranged for you, and where the point of marriage was to find a socially acceptable match, not your soulmate. It must have been a big deal that she married down like that. Right. Sometime between 1717 and 1718, Anne Bonny and her new husband moved to Nassau in the Bahamas. Interesting choice of honeymoon. The Bahamas are located just off the coast of Florida, right on the return path from the Caribbean to Europe, so it was a perfect spot to ambush Spanish galleons. It was over there that Anne Bonny met the pirate captain, Calico Jack Rackham, who became her lover. Wait, wasn't she married, you said? She was. Captain Rackham allegedly offered money to Anne's husband for the purpose of divorce, but he refused. The two ran away together anyway, and Anne joined Calico Jack's pirate crew. All right, so that's one female pirate accounted for. That poses the question, how did Mary Reed meet Anne Bonny? That's an interesting topic, but one we'll have to discuss after the musical break. What do you have in store for us? This next song is by a Celtic artist that is not well known but draws inspiration for songwriting mostly from history. The song is titled Anne Bonny by Carleen. Welcome back. I'm Candy Thornton, co-host of Your Grandma Rocks, your favorite women's history show on KBYS. Et je suis Philippe Girard. Vous écoutez la radio de l'Université McNeese. We just listened to Anne Bonny by the singer Colleen. Today we're discussing the lives of three female pirates, Anne Bonny, Mary Reed, and Rachel Wall. Before our break, we covered Anne Bonny's early life and how she wound up on Captain Calico Jack Rackham's ship. Which involved being born out of wedlock marrying against her father's will, and then dumping her husband to run off with a pirate. Now tell us about Mary Reed. Let's see how she measures up. Mary Reed was born in England around 1685. Her mother was widowed and had just lost a son, but then she became pregnant again by her lover. Another illegitimate child. I'm beginning to sense a pattern. In order to receive an inheritance from her late mother-in-law, Mary's mother disguised her as her deceased brother. And another cross-dresser. Are you sure you didn't mix up your notes? 
No, I assure you, different person, same story. All right, go on. As a teenager, Mary continued to dress as a boy in order to join the British military. While serving as a soldier, she fell in love with a Flemish soldier. Wait, she was still passing off as a man, though, right? Eventually, Mary revealed her true gender to the soldier. I'd pay a lot to be a fly on the wall when that conversation took place. Uh, so, what next? They married and opened an inn, which they called the Three Horseshoes. Love conquers all. Please tell me that this marriage did not end with the wife running away. No. Great. Well, not that great. After only a few months of marriage, her husband fell ill and passed away. Uh-uh. Mary Reed could not operate the inn by herself, so she rejoined the military, this time serving in the Netherlands, but she was out of work again at war's end. Seeking out new work opportunities, Mary Reed boarded a ship to the West Indies. While en route, the ship was attacked by pirates and Mary was captured. I know that sounds terrifying, but early on at least, pirates typically did not kill crewmen. They would spare the life of people if the sailors turned against their captain and gave away the loot without a fight. What happened to her? Pretty much this. Mary joined the pirate crew. Small choice. Surrendering saved her life. Though, of course, she was now an outlaw in the eyes of the British Navy, right? Until she switched sides again. She accepted a pardon by King George I in 1718. The king had offered to pardon any pirates who surrendered themselves to the colonies. Either that or pirates who refused to surrender were fair game to capture and trial. 1718. That would be the period late in the golden age of piracy when the British really cracked down on piracy. That's where this carrot-and-stick policy came in. Accept the royal pardon or else. To earn money, Mary Reed joined the privateering crew commissioned to hunt down the pirates who had not accepted the king's pardon. What fascinates me about this period is how poor the line was between legality and lawlessness. Here you have a person who has a sailor and then a pirate, and then left the pirates, but only to become a privateer, which was essentially a form of piracy, except it was legal because it was backed by the state. The king was offering 20 to 100 pounds for assistance in the capture of pirates. As an added incentive, pirates were offered 200 pounds to turn in their own captains. That's close to $40,000 in today's money. So if we're looking for a motive in her life, that would be money. She was just a poor woman trying to make a living, and she went wherever the money was good. Well, almost. Despite the rewards offered by the king, Mary Reed joined the crew in mutiny and returned to piracy. So not just the money then. Maybe a sense of freedom? After all, this was a period when discipline was notoriously harsh on board ships, and absolute monarchy was the norm in Europe, so a pirate ship was one of the freest places you could find. Some scholars have argued that pirates were not really thieves, but freedom fighters, which seems to fit her profile. Mary Reed, freedom fighter. I like the sound of that. By 1720, she joined Calico Jack Rackham's crew, where she earned her notorious reputation. Well, she did have impressive fighting skills from serving in the military. And a taste for complicated relationships. She developed affection for a man on the ship, and the two became lovers. Go on. When her lover was challenged to a duel, Mary Reed picked a fight with the same pirate and challenged him to a duel on shore two hours before her lovers. Wow, so that she could save her lover's life, I guess. That attitude completely turned upside down the vision of women as damsels in distress, which was dominant back then. Did she survive the duel? She did. Mary Reed won the battle, killing the man on the spot and saving her loved one. She was a pretty intense woman. I agree. Before we get further in our story, though, let's take another break. The next song is by an Irish folk band called Cara. It's called Mary Reed, of course. Of course. Some 300 years ago He had a loving wife But left her to sail the ocean And return no more She'd borne him a son But when he left Never to return again She lay with other men And soon she found her belly blessed again She left the town to hide her secret Soon gave birth to a daughter fair Known by the name of Mary Reed And it's her life story Thunders far, a soldier she became and fought as bravely as did any man until the day she fell in love with Corporal Max Tudor Ben. Six golden years they had together, all last for sure they were. He died too young and Robin Mary once again did cut her
Bonjour à tous and welcome back to Your Grammar Rocks on KBYS. This was Mary Reed by the Irish folk band Care. Je suis Philippe Girard. And I'm Candy Thornton. Today we're covering the life of three women pirates, Anne Bonny, Mary Reed, and Rachel Wall. So far we've talked about the lives of Anne and Mary, how they ended up on the same pirate crew under Kelly Kojak, but not how they earned their fierce reputations. Several accounts describe the two women as ruthless and willing to do anything on the ship. They also swore and drank as much as the men. Well, they must have fit right in with the crew. Yes, although life on a ship was strenuous for even for men, most of the time resulting in premature death. That's true. Between drowning and battles and scurvy and yellow fever, a sailor's life was not a cup of tea. And pirates had an even shorter life expectancy than sailors, uh, usually less than two years. Anne and Mary's time as pirates were also cut short. No big surprise there. Remember that we reached, what, 1720, which is the tail end of the golden age of piracy in the Caribbean? By that point, the British Navy was really cracking down on piracy. Some pirates saw the writing on the wall, accepted royal pardons, and quit. Those who refused were hunted down mercilessly. Right. One night, Calico Jack's crew anchored off the coast of Jamaica. While getting drunk and having a good time, the crew was surprised and attacked. Anne and Mary were the only pirates to defend the ship while the rest of the crew hid in the hold. Again, turning upside down the whole notion of women as the damsels in distress. Yes, Mary Reed was so aggravated at the cowardice of the crew that she fired her pistol into the hold, allegedly killing one man and wounding others. Well, I see why she was mad, but shooting at your own side in the battle isn't the best way to win that battle. It sure isn't. Anne and Mary, quote, fought like men, but they were unable to hold off the attack alone. The crew was arrested and quickly sentenced to hang. Again, very typical of the end of the golden age of piracy. The story usually ends with a pirate hanging from a rope somewhere. Though there were ways to get out of it if you were a woman. There were. Anne and Mary, quote, pleaded their bellies to prolong their days among the living. You might have to explain to our listeners what pleading your belly means. British courts would not execute pregnant women because that would result in the death of an innocent child. So if you were a woman, the best thing to do was to get pregnant in prison and do it quick. Right. It's interesting that these women who cross-dressed and violated every rule of ladylike conduct during their lives fell back on the old trope of the vulnerable mother when their life was in danger. They were really smart about playing the system. Did that work for them? Kind of. There is not information on what happened to Anne Bonny after these events, but Mary Reed died in prison shortly after with fever. So their lives began and ended in mysteries then. Uh, now that we have covered our two more famous female pirates, let's listen to a song. How about Fighter by Christina Aguilera? She wrote it about overcoming obstacles and becoming stronger because of them. I feel like this is fitting. Are you sure it isn't because you just like the song? Well, maybe a little. Okay then, here is Fighter by Christina Aguilera.
This was Fighter by Christina Aguilera. You're listening to Your Grandma Rocks on KBYS. I'm Candy Thornton. Et je suis Philippe Girard. Today we're retracing the life of three famous women pirates, Anne Bonny, Mary Reed, and Rachel Wall. Before our break, we told the amazing stories of Anne Bonny and Mary Reed, who joined the pirate crew of Calico Jack, broke their marriage, violated every norm of society, and somehow got away with it by getting pregnant in just the nick of time. Now, last but not least... Rachel Wall. I didn't know about her before you mentioned her as a topic for the show. You'll have to fill me in on the details. What do we know about her? Frustratingly little. There are many myths and legends that surround Rachel's story. But if the legends are true, she may have been the only known American-born female pirate. All right, if the sources are correct. We'll have to proceed cautiously then. As far as we know, she was born under the name of Rachel Smith around 1760 in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Carlisle, PA, home to three signers of the Declaration of Independence. Carlisle was also smack in an area of high tension between the British, French, and their allies in 1753, which resulted in the French and Indian War in 1756. A frontier town in the middle of a world war. What a strange place to grow up in. Rachel actually came from a good background and got a good education and a religious foundation from her parents, but she ran away from home twice. The second time, at the age of 16, she left her parents for good and met a fisherman near Harrisburg. So a fairly comfortable middle-class background, and yet she became a rebel anyway. The lure of excitement was part of the appeal of piracy. I know that one U.S. pirate who came from money became a pirate anyway because he felt bored as a husband and he wanted to escape the constraints of married life. So we're not the only ones who are fascinated by pirates. People in the 18th century also were. Well, she was too young for a midlife crisis, but she was definitely looking for adventure. Her new husband, a guy named George Wall, left Rachel to fight during the American Revolution, forcing Rachel to take a job as a servant to support herself in Boston. She claimed to be very contented with her position there. A wife and a happy servant. So where does piracy come into our story then? The sources conflict, but according to some accounts, George Wall was a privateer during the Revolutionary War, and he grew accustomed to the easy riches it provided. A privateer being, again, illegal pirates uh, hired by legitimate governments such as the young U.S. Republic. Right, but at the end of the War of Independence, neither British nor the Americans were offering licenses to privateers, and Rachel's husband wouldn't quit the job. If George wished to continue his privateering lifestyle, he would have to do so illegally and turn to piracy. This is often how pirates became pirates. When peace came, they just continued doing what they had been doing legally as a privateer during the war. So George Wall returned to Rachel and convinced her to leave her job and join him as a pirate. Together, they stole a schooner from a retired fisherman and began plundering merchant ships. Not that I want to become a pirate, but how did they do it? They would wait for a storm. Then after the storm passed, they would allow their ship to drift, making it appear as if their ship was ravaged by the storm. Oh, that's pretty shifty. Pretending you're in distress. Rachel, dressed in ragged clothing, would call for help and lure merchant ships to come to her aid, while the rest of the crew hid below deck. Like a mermaid luring sailors. Once the ships were tied together, the crew would then board the merchant ship, killing the captain and crew. Again, playing on the trope of the damsel in distress, and then turning it on its head. After all the cargo and valuables were taken from the ship, it was sunk to make it appear as though the ship was lost to the storm. I didn't know piracy existed that late. I mean, you're talking about the 1780s, 60 years after the end of the golden age of piracy. Karma caught up to the pirates when they sailed into the eye of a hurricane. Most of the crew drowned, but Rachel and three others were rescued. That time, she really needed help. Yes, but let's take another musical break. This song is by an American country artist. The song is called Hurricane by Luke Combs. Hadn't had a good time since you know when Got talked into going out with hopes you were staying in I was feeling like myself for the first time in a long time Till I bumped into some of your friends over there talking to mine Then you rolled in with your hair in the wind, baby, without warning I was doing all right, but just your side had my heart shown in The moon went high and stars quit shining red the moment when we locked eyes over 
Bienvenue à tous, this was Hurricane by Luke Combs. Je m'appelle Philippe Girard. And I'm Candy Thornton. You're listening to Your Grandma Rocks on KBYS, a show about famous women from centuries past. Today we retrace the life of the famous pirates Anne Bonny and Mary Reed, and we're halfway through Rachel Wall and her rumored life as a pirate. Although Rachel's historical records in Boston do not mention piracy, they do give details about other crimes that she committed. She admitted to stealing from ships docked at the Boston wharfs in the middle of the night. Rachel never admitted to piracy, but somewhere in her past, she acquired the knowledge of where shipmasters like to hide their valuables. Which is, again, I'm not trying to learn how to become a pirate, I promise. This was at the head of the ship, or the latrine. Okay, so opposite from the poop deck, then. Very funny. Rachel was arrested and punished at least two other times for theft. She received lashes and was even forced into indentured servitude. Rachel also admitted to attempting to break her husband, George Wall, out of jail in 1785. Wow, how did she do it? She concealed a number of tools in a loaf of baked bread, which she gave to an unsuspecting jailer to pass to her husband. Sounds like a scene from a movie. It does. The third time Rachel was convicted of stealing, she was accused of taking shoes, buckles, and a bonnet from a Boston woman. Caught in the act. This time she couldn't deny it, right? She still claimed to be innocent, but there was too much evidence against her. She was found guilty and sentenced to death. So another fortuitous pregnancy then? No. She was the last woman to be hanged in Massachusetts. Oh, that story ended abruptly. Well, still, an interesting story, except for Rachel and all her victims. A sad story for these three female pirates overall. Their desire for a life outside of a traditional status cut their lives short, but their stories live on. So where do you stand on the big debate on piracy then? Are they criminals or are they freedom fighters? The latter. Many pirates were abused sailors, people fleeing from oppressive monarchies, religious minorities, runaway slaves, or women seeking more opportunities for their sex. I still didn't care for the part where Rachel would pretend to be in danger and then attack the good Samaritans who came to rescue her. But think about it. Pirates set up their own constitution and elect their captain. They shared proceeds equally and even had a version of workers' comps. Freedom fighters, I tell ya. I know, but all that financed by murder and theft. Like Robin Hood, all for a good cause. But we're running out of time. We'll let our listeners draw their conclusions. Wait, you left out the most important part. Which is? When is National Talk Like a Pirate Day? I don't know. Today, September 19th, 2019. Instead of a traditional lame goodbye, we'll have to grab a bottle of rum and say ta-da to all the lame lovers and boxing beauties out there. 